This week, I'm painting up magic armor even the Lord of Change would be proud of. And I want to give a huge thank you to Dave at Mini Wargaming and the team at Lazy Squire Games for sending me the Veil Touched Enforcer I'll be painting for you today. It's part of their Ravage Star Armies of the Veil Touched Miniature line, which you can still late pledge to now. Mini Wargamer Dave here from MiniWargamer.com. Wargamers, welcome to the launch of the Pledge Manager for Ravage Star Armies of the Veil Touched. First and foremost, Pledge Manager is open, so if you missed your chance to actually get some of these models during the campaign back at the beginning of the year, now's your chance. There's a link in the description and pinned in the comments. You can go there and you can pledge to get one of the war packs or the Asalian Mega War Pack, where you get all four war packs. Thanks again for everyone who supported this project and everyone who supports the idea of Mini Wargaming and Lazy Squire Games partnered to make this awesome game. I'm not gonna lie, I was super hyped when Dave reached out to me and asked if I wanted to paint up a model from his Veil Touch miniature line, because honestly, the models look amazing, although they are a little intimidating because they're super detailed, but also just talk about hashtag goals. I wanna have a chaos army as large as his someday in my life. It just, it's amazing, it blows my mind. But we're not just here to talk about his really cool army, we're here to talk about these Veil Touched miniatures. And honestly, I love them. They are super cool. I was sent an enforcer, which I'll be painting up for you today. And as I was looking at him, I was actually having kind of a hard time deciding what chaos god I wanted to represent on this miniature. So I chose to go to my patrons and go, hey, Hobby Knights, what would you like to see me paint him as? And they chose Zinch, which I'm actually really, really hyped for because I love I love the look of the Thousand Suns. I've never painted any Thousand Suns. I own very few of their models, but it is a faction that I've always gravitated towards because I just, I love Egyptian themed things. I want Tomb Kings to come back for that reason. And honestly, I'm really excited to test out a Thousand, th a thousand Suns color scheme on this Ravage Star miniature. I think it's gonna look amazing, but first, we need to get him primed up. And I'm going to do a quick Zenithal Prime using a little bit of gray, just matte gray primer to start off with. And then from top down, we will prime up with some gray sear. If I'm not super satisfied with how the prime turns out, I'm going to go back over a few areas with a dry brush using gray sear just to enhance some of the details and really pop some of those highlights. This is going to look amazing. Let's go ahead and get to painting. All right. The Zenithal Prime looks fantastic. Let's get started on this majestic and detailed armor. I am going to do something a little unconventional for my base coat, and I'm going to use Magos Purple. This is unconventional because we're going to be putting a metallic over top of it, but the reason I'm using the purple is specifically because I'm going with a Pink Horrors, Blue Horrors theme for this color scheme, along with my, you know, Thousand Suns color scheme, which will bring in some gold, but I really want that pink tone to be in the undercoat. So we're going to coat the entire thing with the exception of the head, the cloth, and the base using this color. Now that we have that done, and once it's fully dry, we're going to move on to actually painting the blue teal color tone on the armor. And for this, I'm pulling out my new, actually, it's probably not my new, I think I've said it's my favorite before, but we're pulling out Azure Magic, which is a blue teal metallic from the Army Painter, and I love it. It is fantastic. We're gonna put this down in a single thin coat because I do want that purple undertone to shine through a little bit, which is precisely why I used it. We're gonna get this blue color down, and then we're going to move on to an Aethermatic Blue Wash. This is going to bump up that teal color, really give like this nice glow effect to it, and settle into the recesses a little bit, deepening some of those shadows. Once the Aethermatic Blue has fully dried, we're going to come back in with a final dry brush using Grey Knight Steel. This is sort of a silvery blue color tone that I thought added a little bit of an ethereal nature to some of the raised edges of the blue that we've already painted on. I really want to focus this on the legs and his feet because there's some nice details that are kind of subtly embellished into the leg armor that I want to capture without having to do other colors on. And the same thing for the feet. There's a lot of detail there, but I don't specifically want to make too much of it gold or pink, which are the two colors I'll be using next. So we're just going to focus this blue color tone on there now. Mm -hmm. 
The blue on the armor is looking fabulous, but we need to work on some of the details. And the first color I'm going to use is Zephyr Pink, which is a pink metallic that comes in that same Army Painter line. And frankly, it's amazing. It is a soft, delicate, shimmery pink color tone that I absolutely love. And we're going to be focusing it on the shoulders and the knee pad. I really want to use this sort of sparingly and have it stand out as a unique feature. Once we're done with that, we're going to move on to Greedy Gold, which is my all time favorite gold color tone from the Army Painter. I just use it all the time, but it's going to work perfectly here because I want something bright and vivid. And this is going to be the color we're using on the rest of the trim on his armor. This takes a little while. It's a bit tedious, but it's totally worth it because it ends up looking amazing. Once I'm done with the Greedy Gold, I'm looking at the model and you may have noticed I left the skulls unpainted. Well, that's because I wasn't sure precisely what I wanted to do with them. At first, I was like, maybe I'll make them an actual bone color tone, but I really liked that Zephyr pink color and I wanted to use more of it. So I'm going to go back over the skulls as well as some of the details on the gun, which I left unpainted with this pink. It just pulls this color into the model a little bit more, which I really like. And frankly, I just want to use this pink more. It's really good. It really makes me want to paint some Emperor's children. It's that time of the video where I interrupt to tell you about my Patreon and to let you know that we just added a Discord server, which all tiers get access to. So if you're wanting a way to chat with me, share with me your projects, or just tell me what board games you're playing, definitely make sure to check the link below and check out my Patreon. Oh my God. Oh my God. This model looks so cool. I will admit, when I first got him and took him out, I was a little intimidated because of all the detail on the sculpt, but it has turned out amazing. I love the way the blue, the pinks, and the golds are working together. The Patreons basically voted on Zeech, if that wasn't very obvious. I've probably talked about it already. And I really just wanted to do something very Thousand Suns because I love their armor and I've actually never painted any. And I feel like this is exactly what I would do for them. So we have some details that I need to work on next. We're gonna move on to that, but I've done a little bit of cleanup in between. So everything is re-primed up so that we don't have any little splotches. The only things that are left are the leather parts, the cloth and his face, which I don't actually think will take that long. So, oh, and the base, of course. We also have to take care of the base, 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 base. base. So we'll take care of that here in a bit, but I'm just, oh. The armor, guys, the armor. This is the most fun I've ever had painting armor. With the cleanup out of the way, it's time to work on the leather and cloths. And I have a very simple plan for this that I think is going to be really effective. I was looking at a lot of Thousand Suns art and they often have white cloth for their loin cloths and leathers. And that's precisely what I'm going to do. And I bet you can guess what color we're using. That's right. It's Holy White, my new favorite speed paint, because it just works really well, and I frankly think it looks great as a linen color tone. Once that is down and we've applied it to all the cloth and leather, we're going to go back in and enhance what we've got going on with our Zenithal Prime even further by pulling out bleached linen and edge highlighting some of the raised edges on specifically the loincloth, but also on some of the details on the leather cloth. After that, I do go back in with a bit of Magos Purple, which I unfortunately did not capture, to put a little stripe on the leather pouches just to give them a bit more detail. Next, we need to work on his lovely, angry face. And I'm going to go pretty basic and go with a tried and true method because Faces still intimidate me a little bit and I don't want to mess this up. We're gonna start with a base coat using Taldan Pink, which is another Master Series paint color tone. And then we're going to let that dry thoroughly and pull out Gilliman Flesh, which I've not used in a little bit, but I do really like the color tone. And we're going to thinly apply this as a wash over top everything we just painted. The last thing that I wanna do is edge highlight his nose as well as his brow with a bit of Tawny Flesh Tone. I really like the combination of this. I think it's gonna work great. I'm interrupting to tell you that I also applied a little bit of Aethermatic Blue to his eyes as well as the cables on his head to enhance what was going on there and make them glow. 
We're down to just the final details. And really that just means we need to take care of the base and a couple of bone details. And thankfully, Lazy Squire Games and Dave were kind enough to provide a sculpted base for these models. And frankly, they're fantastic. And I'm gonna keep this relatively simple. We're going to apply Black Templar to all of the stonework that's down there to really make it so that his armor and the bones that are there will stand out really boldly. Then after that's dried, we're going to go ahead and pull out Pallid Bone and apply this to the skulls as well as the little horns that are on his backpack because don't worry I did not forget about them we just needed to wait till this color and then the last thing that I want to do before we can call this model finished and really this is what pushes the model into the like absolute perfect zone for me we're going to take some thinned null oil and apply this to the entirety of the armor we don't want this on the face we don't want this on the cloth and I don't really care if it gets on the base but I don't really want it on the skulls themselves but really the armor is what we're focusing on because it needs it. I want something to go into those shadows a little bit and add a bit of grime to the model. This works amazingly. Let's look at the final product. And here he is my little lord of change he came out so good and guess who is really jonesing to make at least at minimum a thousand suns kill team i am because i really really enjoyed painting this armor i normally will admit i don't actually like painting space marines that much or even that many like chaos marines if i'm doing more I guess traditional colors, but there's something about the Thousand Suns color scheme and these colored metallic paints that I've been playing with that just is so much fun to work with. And it just looks so cool. I think it's because they're like, they end up being just shiny enough, but not overly shiny that the magpie in my brain just goes, ooh, I like this. I like this a lot. But I also want to just compliment Lazy Squire and Dave from Mini Wargaming on the design for these Ravage Star models. The enforcer that I painted today went together super well. He was very clean. I love the sculpted bases. That is a huge plus in my opinion, because I just, as much as I like basing a model, I do also sometimes just like rapid getting them out. And if they have a sculpted base, that just makes it so much faster. Are his feet separate from the base? His feet are actually attached to the base. Okay, I was curious. Yes, the feet are attached to the base, but it goes on really, really cleanly. I had really no seam line issues that I saw, it, and I didn't have to do any really extra cleanup work, which was a great thing about it. I just, I'm really impressed with the model. I had a fun time painting it. If you guys are interested in the Ravage Star Armies of the Veil touched miniatures, you can still get your hands on them. The late pledge is open, so you can go and buy any of the bundles that are available, as well as get some of the add-ons. And one of the benefits to getting these is Dave actually has plans to work with Lazy Squire Games some more and actually make a game system to go along with the models, which will include also expanding the model line to have other races and that kind of thing included, which I think is really awesome. I love seeing new war games come out. Dave has been wargaming for a while, so it'll be amazing. Make sure to check it out if you're interested. In the meantime, I want to give a huge thank you to my patrons for choosing the Zinch color scheme for me to paint and also just for supporting us because without you guys, we wouldn't be doing this. Thank you so much. I have been Angela, you have been watching Hobby Night and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.